There goes one big rat. Gonna do a little combine service. I got over here yesterday, fooled with it a little bit, didn't film it, but I found a surprise in the intake. Yeah, that's some bubble wire. And it's wrapped up in there around my chain. Think we can clip that off. We really ain't got to do a whole lot to it. <clears throat> Get the bob wire out, that's for sure. Get that out. It's already set. For small grains because we cut beans with it last so yeah we get the bob wire out of the front there we'll do that we'll grease it we'll check all the fluids in it we will lube all the chains grease it real good make sure everything make sure all our belts are are in the proper locations or are tight make sure attention on everything is right or right enough close enough you know make sure we ain't got no rats in it yeah we uh we fill her full of mothballs before we store it not the cab but around the motor up in the uh <clears throat> up around everything we put put plenty of mothballs in it but as you can see uh and there's poison up there too they you still get a few rats so you gotta take all that out because you don't want to suck a nest up in it we'll rinse out our condenser real good no nest in there look down in here no nest in there no poop in there nothing in there don't see nothing down there. Get a little poop up on the motor. That's gonna happen. We have a little hydraulic fluid. <clears throat> I'll check motor oil. Good on motor oil. Check the gear case. <coughs> Whew. So, they got me. I didn't look for it. She have said, and look for yellow jackets right there. You can see them. Oh, it stung a piss out of me. Sorry to make my arm hurt. Yep. Uh, last time I got stung with one on my arm, it made my hand swell up. So, whew. We'll, uh, we'll go get some ether and put them damn things to sleep ah <sighs> forgot to say and look for wasp and yellow jackets and hornets they found me first though and damn it hurts <laughs> just a little bit old dab a little bit of red spot right there that's all it is a little bit of red spot boy it's making my whole arm hurt though when i was younger i could take a sling didn't even bother me but the older I've gotten, the more getting stung by stuff bothers me. I mean, it doesn't, doesn't make me feel bad. I mean, it, the stings hurt worse than they used to. That's what I mean. Where are you at, starter fluid? i got a friend to introduce you to. There you are. I see you down in there. starter fluid. It's great for wasp and hornets. And now they're dead. So I reached in here like this and they got me. I know the air filter in here is going to be dirty and it'll be blowed out what I'm doing is checking to make sure 
No mice or rats got in here over the over the winter. I'm about 99% sure they didn't. It don't hurt to check. And she is pretty dirty. No mice or rats in there. That's good. I forgot the leaf blower in the shop. So we'll just stick it back in there for right now. I am going to bring a leaf blower to blow off the deck here and to blow the air filter out. So it looks like right now we're just a little bit low on the main hydraulic tank. I thought we would be right at the end of the year. I did have a, a line not blow off but get a leak and I wasn't, wasn't too sure if I got enough fluid back in it. I bet it's just barely low. Yep, arm's starting to get real sore now. Stupid yellow jackets. They're dead now though, like they need to be. Yeah, everything looks pretty good, considering it's set. That's uh, I've got done running in November this year, end of November. So it's set for seven months, and we're gonna get out, get her all greased up, serviced up, we'll get it fired up and ease it out of the barn and see what kind of critters come out of it when we turn it on. And that's what the mess of stuff was up in there. That should be a good enough start to uh, fire it up and run the rats out of it. We're gonna crank this thing up and bag it out. Run the rats out of it. As long as more wasps don't sting me. Everybody get feet from my hat, damn thing. Yeah, I got you that time. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get stung again. My arm is already sore. started that's a that's a plus oh man look we got three quarters tank of fuel in it look at there that's some that good old-fashioned 265 basically bought in the fall i'm afraid we ain't gonna buy nothing that cheap for quite a while ac still working that's good so we can get back out of here without hitting that thing We'll go ahead and get this thing set on, set on a wheat set. Won't be exactly what we want to run it at, but it's going to be a good spot to start at. Get our handy dandy cheat sheet out here. And so on wheat, where's wheat? Wheat. We want to be running 600 RPMs on a cylinder or higher. We want to be probably on about one on the concave. <clears throat> and we are. We're at one right now, yeah. So we'll turn it, we'll flip around. It's I think we're going to go to high speed. I think that's what I got to do on a concave. Speed is up right high. Yeah, we'll have to do it high. Forgot to do that. Sure, like right there for right now. So we can get a auger out. We'll see what kind of mess comes out of it. There goes one big rat. One big rat. So the only thing I can see odd right now is we got a little bit of odd, a little bit of odd. Uh, thump sound coming out of the front out of the intake when the intake's on. I don't know if there's something else stuck in there <clears throat> or if we got a burn out or what, but that's what we need to look at. Everything else seemed to work fine for what it is. 
So we'll put this thing back up. So, yeah, we'll go from there. We'll get it all figured out. Yeah, I see right up there. Wasp nest. <sighs> Try to get me again. Maybe a little bit. Yep. That's going to get a bigger hammer. Yeah, he needs more weight on it. We got a big one in here. They all cross road. Uh, they all over the shop, I think. I might need a sledgehammer almost. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was talking about. Now, under problem. So, my drag chain, or my drag bar on the intake chain, feeder house chain, was bent out. We got it whooped down a little bit. It was rubbing right here. Probably to go buy us a bigger hammer here in a minute. Well, bigger hammer didn't work. Still bent. Dad stopped by. Dad stopped by and checked on me while I was messing with this thing. Because he was wanting to make sure I got all the bob wire out. I said, yeah. And he was saying, hey, I'll turn it around. I found a couple bent ones. I was like, yeah, like this one, bent out. He's like, oh no, I seen ones that are bent in. I was like, okay. So I got dad to rotate it. Which just pull this belt. And it, you pull it one full spin, this thing turns like a quarter. So dad was turning it while I was watching and there's probably six or seven bent drag arms on it. And there's one that somebody had taken off. Because it instead of rivets, like these have rivets, it has a nut and a lock washer. I mean a nut and a, a bolt and a lock nut on it. So I'm gonna cut one off. Got my grinder, safety glasses. So I'm gonna cut one off, go put it in the shop press and see if I can't straighten it out. I mean I did call about a new one. <clears throat> Two weeks. I can have one in two weeks. And that's that's catalogs. That's you know aftermarket stuff. Didn't even call deer. Didn't even didn't even think about it. Don't even want to think about it. Cause they'll be two weeks. So we're gonna cut it off and go from there. End up pulling about nine of them off, or pulling nine. As you can see, if you look down this one, she's got a bend to her. Put a little bit on there, like so. Or actually, like this way. It'd been like that, so that one's bent back down towards the ground. I'm gonna go over to the shop press and see if we can't straighten a few of these out. We'll get them as straight as we can. It's uh, gonna be better than whooping on one with a hammer. That sure wasn't working. And uh, we'll bolt them back on. And if the boats don't hold, we'll weld them back on. We'll, we'll make them stay back at the combine. We're going to do a test it. Let's just see how things look. Looks all right. Goes like this. There we go. It backward. Even got some bolts to see if these bolts are the right length. Hmm. Looks like they're a little bit long. I think the bolt is going to be too long. Go that way, fine. It's going to work, but looks like I need uh, inch bolts. Yeah. Those look a lot better than they did. That's got us a good stopping place for today. I mean, uh,. I don't want I would like to go ahead and bolt all this up this evening, but I don't want to run to town and have to buy bolts and then have to run back town again tomorrow to get feed and stuff. And yeah, so, you know, I'm trying to consolidate my trips and not spend as much gas as I've been spending for use. Because uh, that stuff is it's going like, it's, Anyhow, just trying to consolidate my trips. We'll get all that back together tomorrow. 
probably even back a cab out back what a little bit of dust is left in the cab out and i kind of think that's all we got left to do good news is it fired right up uh engine oil was right where we left it at in the fall so that's good uh, all the hydraulic fluids well the gear cases where it was at when we parked it we we're probably maybe a quart low on the main hydraulic tank but like i said earlier we lost a lot we had a pinhole develop in a line we changed the line and we finished running and we put some put some fluid back in but i didn't think we put enough if i remember right we were uh i only had like a gallon in the truck and i think i leaked like two gallons out or no i had three quarters of a gallon and i think i leaked a gallon out when that hose give way so i think it's it's about a quart low we'll change that and then the combine itself should be ready still need to swap the one nose cone on the head then that should be ready and hopefully with as hot as it's been uh the wheat will be dry we will check some tomorrow check we'll check the moisture on some wheat tomorrow and go from there so uh like always the good lord's willing catch you on flip side till the next